um, and I'll turn it on again after I'm done. Um, so I have been tasked to talk about challenges that come along when we try to assimilate observations that have large spatial, temp spatial temporal resolution. Uh, before I start again, I'd like to acknowledge all of the collaborators, some of which are, are some of whom are listed here, uh, that helped uh, with uh, the work that I'm going to present today. Um, so these challenges that I'm going to be presenting um, are going to be done in the context of assimilating grace and grace follow on observations. Um, so to start off with, why do we want to assimilate grace? Um, so grace is again a great, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with it, is a great uh, satellite mission because um, it's capable of really sensing changes in mass. Uh, it's kind of like a scale in the sky. Uh, so it's been great to investigate global uh, studies, such as, for example, the example of understanding how much ice is lost in the, in the poles. Uh, but um, because we care about the land hydrology, it's kind of like have been a little bit more challenging to use GRACE for land hydrology applications. Uh, and the reason for it is because GRACE really just provides a column integrated observations of that um, terrestrial water storage, where terrestrial water storage is really just um, given by the summation of all waters uh, within the land. So imagine this to be the summation of groundwater, sun, moisture, snow, the uh, water uh, on lakes, rivers, and the canopy, water in the canopy. Uh, so again, column integrated, but then most importantly, uh, the observations that come out of these satellite missions are pretty coarse uh, in, uh, in horizontal resolution. So it's about 300, 400 kilometers. So this is more or less uh, the same width of the state of California in, in the US, so pretty coarse uh, um, horizontal resolution. And also it comes um, in monthly averages, so again, uh, coarse temporal resolution. And then um, on top of it, they also come with very strong spatial correlation, spatial error correlation. So how do we um, lead, deal with this in a data simulation context? Um, so the, the, our approach was really just to try and use um, data simulation to try and downscale, and I, I say quote unquote downscale, but trying to reduce uh, that uh, observations, uh, that very large course um, spatial and temporal resolution from GRACE uh, to scale that are more useful to hydrological applications. And the way we do so is by uh, really leveraging upon uh, models that we can run at high spatial resolution, where again, this high, it's in quotation marks, um, it's high compared to the observation that I'm using. So in a specific case that I'm chosen, we're gonna chose a few example uh, slides here. We use the catchment and surface model, with, uh, which we, we kind of like um, heard about throughout these three days. It's the land model that is used at NASA um, GMAO. And um, and it can it, it runs and the experiments that I uh, I ran um, they it runs at 36 kilometers so again much finer with respect to that coarse spatial resolution and and you can generate outputs of course in much finer resolution with respect to the monthly um, uh, resolution of gray so how, hourly or daily uh, and uh, CLSM can provide the terrestrial water storage. Um, through the um, um, submission in a way of the soil moisture profiles and other storages such as snow um, layers on top of the surface and the uh, water storage. So the idea of the data simulation that I, I'm going to uh, give you a little bit more details about uh, is really just to model terrestrial water storage using a model that runs a much finer uh, resolution and then to try to use the data simulation as a um, way to downscale those observed um, coarse scale terrestrial water storage observation and then downscale them down to uh, the model finer scales where all these numbers really represents the um, numbered uh, uh, vertical downscale uh, if you want components of that terrestrial water storage. So for example, catchment deficit being that variable that uh, in the model defines uh, as groundwater uh, or uh, two and three being related to uh, surface and roots on soil moisture. So again, taking advantage of this model um, high, again, quote unquote, the resolution to downscale these course observations of grace. So this slide is gonna be a little bit messy, but just um, I wanted to show you that there are really 
four key steps on the data simulation approach from GRACE. Um, and the first step is really trying to use that um, very fine uh, temporal and uh, spatial resolution of the model. So for every single uh, model grid, say you have a time series, sub-monthly, so say this is the month of January, so you have sub-monthly time series of your surface soil moisture, roots on soil moisture, um, groundwater, and then you sum that up to generate a sub-monthly time series of terrestrial water storage. At the end of the period, you do a temporal aggregation, so essentially just uh, computing the monthly mean uh, of your model uh, terrestrial water storage. And, uh, um, and then the second step will be to uh, aggregate this to the uh, observation um, spatial resolution. So again, spat spatially aggregating those um, high resolution 36 millimeters to something that is more similar to the observation that you're using. So it's at that presentation, you see something like, that look like going from the fine and grid model to um, something that looks more like the, um, the observation, very coarse um, observation. And then step three and four uh, will be really just to use this ob observation uh, within a, a classical, um, I'm going to call it ensemble common filter at this point, but you'll see that uh, oftentimes we refer to these as an ensemble common smoother to apply the increments that are derived from the um, from the assimilation and the increments are applied um, on states directly of the model so um, the groundwater state the catchment deficit or um, the uh, states uh, like snow and the root zone um, excess which defi that defines the root zone soil moisture so the key problem here is that because we are dealing with uh, an observation that it's again monthly averaged and uh, it's very coarse in space, uh, we uh, had some challenges and we kind of like had to work a little bit harder uh, to understand how do we deal with uh, um, assimilating these observations that are monthly averaged. Uh, and so I'm going to show three um, um, cases that we explore in order to do so. Um, the first case that I'm going to show is kind of like more of a sequential ensemble common filter maybe uh, type of approach where we say, well, we have, say, uh, the uh, groundwater state for every single day of one month. Um, we could technically just um, compare or compute an increment um, of that um, of that um, groundwater state in this specific case. At the end of the month, uh, when we have uh, completed the run, we can compare, uh, we can compute the increment using the uh, monthly, ever, monthly observation from GRACE and the monthly uh, prediction from the model, and then apply that increment that we compute at the end of the month and then move forward, the kind of like any sequential type of approach. Um, the second approach, which is something that um, was uh, the initial uh, GRACE data simulation approach was um, done in 2008 by Ben Zaitich. He applied this type of scheme where he used the first state of the month, so say groundwater uh, and the first day of the month to compute an increment, then then applied smoothly throughout the rest of the month. But in the, um, in the case that I'm going to show today, um, we actually chose something a little bit different where we said, well, why, why can't we compute increments uh, throughout the entire month? So say every day of the month, we compute an increment by comparing the state, the errors of the, the groundwater in this specific case um, to uh, the terrestrial water storage that is observed. Uh, and why don't we use those increments and average, uh, compute an average um, of the month increment and then apply that at the beginning of the month and then let the model adjust that model, that adjust that increments um, among those vertical um, components, so say uh, the surface soil moisture, roots on soil moisture and groundwater and, and move forward. And that's why sometimes you see, um, whenever you see GRACE data simulation, they oftentimes refer to smoother approach, but Again, I, I think we're still a little bit unsure, not unsure, but we really can't really call this smoother, um, like pure smoother in, in terms of data simulation uh, terms. 
So again, just to reiterate a very simple um, way of looking at this, it's like, well, we have one month, we run our model once, at the end of it, we make a prediction of what the model uh, thinks the terrestrial water storage of that grace observation looks like. We compute increments, we apply it at the beginning of the month, and then we run um, the model forward. So it's kind of like a two steps approach. So just to give you an, a, examples of uh, a results so looking at also how that coarse spatial resolution is downscaled from 300, say, the uh, observation scale to a finer resolution. Uh, I'm showing you here on the left uh, side the uh, grace terrestrial water storage observation and what that observation minus the model forecast look like. Um, and you see that the, uh, the key point that I wanted to illustrate here is that you see the spatial resolution being very coarse. And when you apply the data simulations to that um, calculation of the common gains, uh, you will uh, get um, spatial patterns that are much finer um, in the order of 36 kilometers, again, those um, driven by the models. Another point that I wanted to um, point you at here is that also if you look at the scale, so these are actual increments in the three uh, layers, you see that most of the increments are coming in the bottom layer, the one that uh, the model um, uh, uses to predict in a way um, groundwater. And this is in a way linked to what uh, perhaps Clara was talking about, the fact that we are simulating something that has a monthly temporal scale. Um, and then the both surface and roots on soil moisture have much of a dynamic um, in a way uh, temporal uh, dynamic, therefore that uh, long time uh, um, observation is more beneficial to update something that has a slower, in a way, uh, temporal scale. Uh, just to show you some uh, evaluation um, results, uh, I'm showing here uh, four uh, graphics. Um, the top one is uh, surface soil moisture, then you have roots on soil moisture, groundwater, and terrestrial water storage. And what you're looking at here is a difference in skill uh, between the a case where I had the, the data simulation of grace um, and the one that I didn't have any assimilation. So anytime you see a blue dot or a blue value, it means that the model improved in, at these locations where I actually had in situ observations. Um, for evaluation. The bottom one is really not an, a, in the, is not an independent observation because I'm really just comparing against that observation that I am also assimilating. But the key reason why I wanted to show this is that if you notice, you had a, in a fairly good amount of blue dots or improvements um, in the uh, groundwater storages, but the surface and the roots on sun moisture are kind of like a mixed, um, they have mixed results. Again, perhaps from that um, thing that I just said about uh, grace being, having more of a long uh, temporal uh, dynamic and these two um, storages instead being more dynamic. So that raised another uh, question. It's like, well, can we improve uh, also these top surfaces, uh, surface storages, uh, so surface and root zone, by, uh, say, including some uh, soil moisture data simulation? And that, again, raised another series of challenges. So um, what we did- Two minutes. Was, Two minutes. Just Keep start, was try to use an approach that um, uh, Gabriel published a few years ago. And this is a very similar approach of soil moisture data simulation that is also used for SMAP level four. Um, and combine GRACE observation with something like SMOS uh, that comes in much finer, again, compared to GRACE. Uh, resolution. I'm not going to go into the details of the soil moisture uh, estimation, but the key question that um, uh, we raised was, well, how can we merge something that has high spatial temporal resolution with something that is low uh, spatial temporal resolution? And if you remember a few um, slides uh, earlier, um, I showed that graphic where I only had grace. And the way we do so is kind of like by assimilating that SMOS um, data in both run. So then whenever we make that prediction of what the model looks like in terms of terrestrial water storage, the model already has seen um, some of these mass increments that we will apply also at the second run. 
So again, grace to update more or less the bottom layer. So the groundwater is low uh, dynamic and the uh, and SMOS to instead update the, the more um, dynamic temporally um, uh, storages. So I'm just gonna uh, skip over these slides very quickly, but uh, this is just to illustrate that um, the, the, the thing that I just said, the fact that the GRACE um, data simulation tend to reduce um, ensemble spread at the bottom, um, if you want, of the storages, so the, the catchment deficit of groundwater, whereas the um, surface soil moisture up updates from this moss um, is uh, reducing the ensemble uh, mo mostly in the, uh, in the top layers. Uh, so again, um, the key reason why we wanted to uh, use this moss in combination of grace was to also improve that top layer. So again, this is the same uh, slides that you were looking at earlier uh, in the most of the left column, where I added also this moss in the center. And when we combine both of them together, you see that now you start seeing a lot of blues saying that uh, when you combine two types of observation together, you lead to the best results. So this is going to be the last really thing that I'm going to show you, and then I'll, I'll take to, I'll take you to my conclusions. Um, and, and another challenge that we uh, encounter by uh, combining SMOS and GRACE was when we look at actual increments of both the simulation system. So you have in the red bars; these are increments in the catchment deficit brought by GRACE. Whereas the blue and the um, and the green are increments that are brought by this this mass assimilation in the surface and roots on soil moisture, and if you notice, their sign is opposite. So even though the combined assimilation was best, we observed some anti-correlation between these observations, kind of like these observations fighting against each other, and that's a problem that we really didn't solve, but just pointed out that that was happening in our system. So I'm just going to leave you with perhaps this slide. I have a conclusion slide on my talk, but this is really uh, something that I, I started thinking a few years ago when I looked at um, uh, merging GRACE and SMOS together. And, and the thing is that we have tons of observation out there, and all of these have different spatial temporal resolution. And as I show, most of them have complementary observations. And I, I think one of the key challenge that we perhaps as a community could work on, and at least that's something that interests me, is really how do we best uh, merge them together in a comprehensive manner? And I'm happy to discuss ideas with any one of you. And with that, I am done.